Uh, so number 14. Okay. Uh, okay, these are actually a lot easier than you might think. Um, what's the antiderivative of cosine? S sine. Because the derivative of sine is cosine. So as we move forward, that's going to be a little confusing. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, but the antiderivative of cosine is just regular old sine, which means that the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So that means this is going to switch around to be plus 4 cosine t plus c. That's it, dude. Uh, why would it be t squared? Oh, okay, great question. Um, that is only if we're using the power rule. So it's only if it's a variable to a uh, power. But then different things happen with, you know, different types of functions. Uh, yep, don't know why you would. All right, uh, what's the antiderivative then of uh, cosine? Sine theta. It, right, so I'm going to make that just plus 5 instead of going negative cosine like that okay uh okay so then yeah sorry plus c forgot that so then just to confuse you gauge we're going to mix these up so this one has oh okay what you got whose derivative is secant squared no no tangent so that one you have to uh, look on your note card and remember that since the derivative of tangent is secant squared, the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent, okay? Uh, um, just because the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so if you go backwards, then it, that's just like how it works out. Oh, I thought something else was happening on your t-shirt. Um. I thought there were people like I thought that was blood or something. Yes. Uh, okay, how far do we go? 18. All right. So same thing for uh, number 17. Two secant tangent. You're like what? But. No, we have a uh, derivative that is secant tangent. Which trig function do you take the derivative of and get secant tangent as an answer? Secant. So since the derivative of secant is secant tangent, the antiderivative of secant tangent is secant. Yeah. Uh, okay, Gage, you want to take th what, this one from us? No? All right. Who's got uh, the antiderivative of one half t to the negative one half? So, no, sir. We're adding one. So negative one half plus one is positive one half divided by uh, one half. Yep. Good. Uh, I'm gonna have a plus c. So yeah, like uh, what's his name said there, uh, the one halves cancel. So yeah, um, the final answer is 2 secant t to the 1 half plus c. Yep, yep. Do you guys hear that? When there's a number in front of like a trig thingy and you're doing the antiderivative, the number just stays there. It doesn't, uh, doesn't affect the problem at all. Um, okay, so for this one, I have to rewrite it um, as 2x to the 1 half. Okay, so what's the antiderivative of 2x to the 1 half? Um, 
what do I do with that three halves? Multiply by the reciprocal. So if I take 2x to the 3 halves, yeah, and multiply it by 2 thirds, then I get uh, 4 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 6 sine x plus 6. Okay? Good? Oh, uh, no, we got, we got more to learn. Sure. 12 and 13? 11, 12, and 13? Katie, Grandstrom. I know, right? Uh, what do you have to do for 11 before you can find the derivative? So this would be 10x to the... No, 10 times to the negative 9. Uh-uh, add one. Oh. Negative eight. Add one to a negative number. Um, okay, you said 12 is challenging. I thought, did I... Uh, oh, that was Elena. Uh, no, because we don't have an antiderivative quotient rule. Yet. Ah. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take this and rewrite it. Correct. I'm going to take this and change it into x to the negative 6. And then I'm going to distribute that across all of these terms. So it's 5x to the negative 6 minus 4x to the negative 3 plus 2. You want to talk to me about that a little bit? Because when you're multiplying, you add the exponent. Okay? All right, now we have it in a situation where we can take the antiderivative. So this would be 5x to the negative 5 divided by negative 5. This would be negative 4x to the Good, negative 2 divided by negative 2. This would be plus 2x, because the derivative of 2x is just 2. And then we'd have a plus c. Got a little simplifying we can do. And if you wanted to, you could move those things with the negative exponents downstairs, but you don't have to. Did somebody say 13? Katie did. No wonder... No wonder I didn't nominate her as student of the month because it's got a little box around it. Uh, okay, so same thing as the other one. We have to rewrite this by um, multiplying it by u to the negative 2. Right? So that makes this u... u to the second plus 3u to the n negative 3 halves. Okay, so that's just rewriting it. We have not taken the antiderivative yet. Okay, so the antiderivative of that is a plus. 3u to the negative 1 half over negative 1 half plus c, which equals u to the third over 3. Can we do the uh, divide by negative 1 half in our heads? Times by negative 2, so that would be negative 6u to the negative 1 half plus c. Okay. Of course, add a little something something onto this. All right. 
So this says uh, find f if the derivative of f is x times the square root of x. And this time they're telling us a point on the graph. Huh? Oh, yeah. The code word is what? The code word is butterscotch. Yes. They do, but if they don't come in and tell me that word, then you guys get the script. Okay. Um, all right. So the first thing that we're going to do is just business as usual. Um, I'm going to rewrite x times the square root of x as what? x times the square root of x can be rewritten as what? x to the 3 halves because yeah the square root of x is x to the 1 half and then we already had x to the first so 1 plus 3 halves is I mean 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves right okay uh, well you add the exponents yeah when you're multiplying okay so now we can figure out what the original function is just like we've been doing before if I add 1 to that it becomes x to the 5 halves over 5 halves plus C, which we're going to mess with in just a minute. And then just like we've been doing, if I'm dividing by 5 halves, I'm really multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? So nothing new there, right? Okay. What's different now is since we know this point on the graph, we're going to figure out what C is. Okay, because what this means right here is that if I plug 1 into the function, I get 2 as an answer. All right, so now I'm going to take this function right here, and I'm going to plug 1 in for x, set that equal to 2, and solve it for c. So what is 2 fifths times 1 to the 5 halves? 2 fifths. Good. 1 to any power is just 1. So 2 fifths plus C equals 2. Okay. Uh, what? 8 fifths. Yeah. So uh, Mason took this 2 and changed it into 10 fifths. And then to solve this for C, I would subtract 2 fifths from both sides. So C equals 8 fifths. So our answer in this case is F of X equals 2 fifths X to the 5 halves, not plus C, but plus 8 fifths. All right. So this one, thank you. Thank you. So, so this one does not say find the most general uh, antiderivative. It gives us an actual value. So I have to use that to figure out. The exact answer because uh, yeah technically C can be any letter you want it to be they use C because C is the first word in constant uh, well, that's a good point no you couldn't I mean you could use X for this if you change this to something different right but you just can't uh, you could that would be maybe a little bit confusing um, because you might think that it is uh, zero um, all right, so why stop at uh, one antiderivative when you can do two? So this time, they're telling us that the second derivative is 12x squared plus 6x minus 4. You know what uh, f of 0 is, and you know what f of 1 is, and so now we're going to use that to figure out what the uh, function is, okay? Yep, got to do the antiderivative twice. So the first time we do the antiderivative, that's just going to get us back to the derivative. Okay, and then funny thing that we just had the conversation about what letter you're going to use. Because watch what happens now. Now I have to take the antiderivative of C. Yeah, so before we do that, though, what's the antiderivative of 4x to the third? Just plain old x to the fourth. 
What's the antiderivative? Awesome. Whoops, that's a minus. Okay, and then what's the antiderivative of C? C x. Nope, C x. Okay, so now we have to add another constant onto the end of this, um, but we already use C, so. Okay. So you want to use uh, E instead? Whatever. Uh, how about this? You guys will hate this even more. I'm going to call this C1 and call that C2. Okay. Uh, all right, so now we're going to figure out what both of those are by using two points. So this says when I plug in 0, I get 4 as an answer. So f of 0 is, what do you get when you plug 0 into here? What do you get when you plug 0 into here? What do you get when you plug 0 into here? What do you get when you plug 0 into here? So that means that if I plug in 0, I'm just left with c sub 2, and that equals 4. So we just figured out c2 equals 4. And then if I plug 1 into there, what is this? Plus? Minus, plus, if I plug 1 into here, then I would get C1, and then we just figured out that this is 4, and altogether that should equal 1. So what does C1 equal? Winner. So that means that C1 equals negative 3. So now we know our final answer is going to be that f of x equals x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay? Oh, yeah. That's what I said. Oh, dang it. Plus what? Plus eight dojo points. Wow. Eight. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. I don't know if there's anything else uh, in here for us. Some graph sketching. Uh, okay. Sad day. No, actually, uh, I think I told you guys, I think we had this discussion, I'm going to be in Minnesota this weekend. Be in a frozen wasteland. Oh, yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is Friday. So I guess technically, yes, you're right. We'll have a sub tomorrow and Friday. Uh, I don't know. Apparently they know how. And there was a time uh, a lot of years ago we went there for Christmas and it was snowing hard. Uh, we were having like something at my brother's house and uh, my wife and I were looking outside and we're like, oh my God, how are they going to take off in all this snow? We get to the airport, check in, and I go, uh, it's snowing pretty hard out there. Is it going to be okay? And the guy looked at me like I was a complete idiot. Like, you know, really? Some snow is going to completely shut down you know, in the 21st century. So apparently they have that figured out, how to land in cold weather and how to land in... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I knew that. Uh, and the joke with that is that there was a guy um, who uh, had one of those athletic um, work-study thingies, and his job was to keep the snow off of the steps of the central library. So they just paid him because he was an athlete. Because his steps are cheated. So he didn't have to you know, get it. So they could like file that, yeah, here's your job. We're not we're not giving you a scholarship, we're giving you a job. But there's like nothing to do. 